Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am finally going to be uh, sharing with you guys my MAC starter kit. Someone asked me to do this video literally right when I started my YouTube channel. It was a very long time ago and I said I would do it and then I put it off and put it off and put it off and I've tried to film it once before and it ended up being like 45 minutes long which to me was just too long like I couldn't see anybody sitting down and watching me rant about MAC makeup for 45 minutes um so I went back to the drawing board and I looked at my list of things that I was trying to tell you guys to get and I sort of realized that some of them I love to own but they're not necessary they're things that you could definitely go without if you were going to get MAC makeup so I narrowed it down a bit um I'm hoping that this will be a lot shorter um, but I'm not going to rant because I want to get straight into it. So the first thing that I feel like any makeup guru should have, and a lot of people will tell you about this, is MAC Fix Plus. This one is the travel size. It is also the coconut scent. When they launched their Work It Out collection, they released uh, three new scents. So I think it was cucumber, coconut, and lavender. I got the coconut one because I love the smell of coconut. Um, but they always do carry the regular unscented one, and that one also comes in a full size. These ones only come and travel size so you can use this to set your makeup I like to you know on particular dry days I like to spray it all over my face and sort of pat it in just to add a little bit of hydration to my skin and also uh, if you're using like loose pigments or pigment shadows or glitter shadows or something that you want it to pack a little bit of extra punch you can definitely spray this on your brush and it will help the product to adhere a lot better to both the brush and then again to your lid when you uh, go to apply it so highly highly recommend that the next product that I mentioned in my 40 beauty questions tag video, it is the, you know, if I had to walk out of the house and only wear one product, what would I wear? Max strobe cream. This stuff is phenomenal. It's been around for a long time, but they did, um, I believe last summer, just recently release uh, a whole bunch of new sort of colors to the line. So the original one is now known as the Pink Light. They also have Peach Light, which is the one that I have right now. There is a Silver Light, which I also do have in my collection, but I'm saving it until this one runs out. And then there's a Gold Light and a Red Light. So I feel like depending on your skin tone and what the look that you're going for really is, you might get more use at of one than the other. For me, the red light was a little too dark. I'd already tried the pink light several times. Uh, the peach light was the one that spoke the most to me. So this is the one that I got. Um, it is just a, like it looks like just a white lotion, but then when you put it on your skin and blend it in, it gives it this beautiful like sheen and iridescence. And I hope you guys can like see the little hints of the peach reflex in there as well that this one has. This is fabulous as a moisturizer. It's great to mix into your foundations um, and your primers as well. And it also does have the ability to kind of take down some of the redness in your face. So, you know, if you're getting like really, really patchy areas of redness, you can definitely apply this and it will tone it down a little bit. Um, a lot of makeup brands do have products similar to this, but this one is my favorite by far. Again, another one I highly recommend, and I do have a couple of the colors, and they are all gorgeous. It's just a matter of picking out the one that is best for you. Um, the next two things that I'm going to talk to you about are both concealers. Now, you'll notice in this video that I'm not going to talk about MAC foundations at all. Reason being that I don't really wear a lot of foundation. Now, I did just pick up their Next to Nothing foundation, and I think it is fabulous. But I think that depending on what kind of a coverage you like and what kind of a foundation and a finish you like, I don't want to recommend one over the other because I like a really sheer foundation. I know most people don't. They like a full coverage, you know, something that provides a lot of a base for the rest of their face. I'm not like that. I like a sheer coverage, so I don't want to recommend one foundation over the next one. I'm not really that big into foundations, but I will talk about my two favorite concealers from them. So the first one is the MAC Studio Fix Concealer, and this has an SPF of 35, and it comes in like a pot like their eyeshadows do, and it's like a cream concealer. So that's that right there. I am, no, my gosh, why does this finger not go forward? There we go. I am an NW20 as I am in everything MAC except for like their medium stuff. So that's my shade there. Um, this is a little bit more of, I would say, like a full coverage concealer because it is a cream based. It's not as liquidy. So when you do put it on, it does take a little bit more care and effort to blend out um, so that you can't see that it's really packed on heavily and that it doesn't get cakey, but it is fantastic. Um, even when I use my Pro Longwear, which I will talk about in like 30 seconds, 
if I'm having a, like, particularly lately, you guys can see some of my makeup has started to wear down from the, actually that hasn't, but this has because I've been picking at it. Um, when I get breakout like this, where it's something particularly bad that I need to conceal, I always reach for this. This was the first one that I ever had. Um, I do find it a little bit heavy for my under eye area because I find that it does, you know, cake up a little bit and I don't want that there because it settles into fine lines a little bit uncomfortably and it makes it look cakey and you definitely don't want your under eye you want them concealed but you don't want them to look like they've been heavily concealed so I do stay away from this for there but for more like spot coverage when I'm having bad bad breakouts and whatnot I always go for this and my other one that I do use under my eyes and I will spot conceal with it to a point is the pro Longwear uh, concealer again I am in the shade NW20 the one thing I will say about this is I really dislike the pump on it because I find that no matter how lightly you push, you're always going to get too much um, in the pump that you won't really use all of it. And also, there's almost always going to be a little bit left in the bottom of the container because it is a glass container and the top does not screw off. So unless you're like going to crack it open to get out what's in the bottom, you're always going to lose that on a little bit of product, which is unfortunate, but it is fantastic. As its name suggests, it lasts all day long. Um, it is great at concealing dark circles under your eye. It is really good for spot concealing if you have minor blemishes and issues. Like I said, I would use the other one if you're looking for a heavier kind of coverage, but this is fantastic. Um, I've only recently started to use other concealers and I still do really, really like this and still do come back to it all of the time. So MAC offers a wide, a wide variety, a wide variety of blushes that you can get. They have their cream color bases, which can be used as blushes. They can also be used for lip color and for highlighters, depending on which kind of color you're looking at, but they have pro longwear blushes and satin blushes and sheer tone blushes and matte blushes. Literally, like, they have a wide, wide variety of blushes. They just came out with their extra dimension blushes, which are beautiful, but I didn't want to talk about those quite yet because even though I love them, I haven't tried them out enough to know um, how well they perform, but something I do have a lot of familiarity with and I would recommend to anyone are their Mineralize blushes. These are just two of the ones I have. I have about seven or eight of them and there are a couple more colors that I don't have. I just picked out the two that I reach for the most. So these are mineralized makeups. Um, this one is in the color Warm Soul and you can see like it does have a little bit of like a glisten to it. It's got a little itty little bit of like reflex and sparkle in it which again if that's not your thing maybe don't go for these blushes but I love that. I love a sheer blush. I love a dewy makeup look. I love a very glowy look. So these are perfect for me. And the other one is in Ray Beam. And same thing. These are so soft. They are so pigmented. Extremely blendable. Um, very long wearing. I have so many of these. These are just the two that I will always come back to time and time again and reach for all the time. If you are more into a matte blush, definitely check out their regular line as well, but um, I do prefer these over their regular line. For the most part, there's one or two colors in their regular line that are like my favorite favorite, but as an all-together grouping, the mineralized blushes are the way to go. The next thing I'm going to talk about are their highlighters. So the first one is one that everybody talks about any MAC girl has and that is their mineralized skin finish in soft and gentle. It is stunning. It is the most beautiful like peachy champagne-y like look at that. I and you know what every once in a while I don't want to say I forget about this highlighter but I get into using so many other highlighters and it just escapes my mind and then I come back to it and I swatch it or I look at it and I remember exactly why I love it so, so much and why it will always be my favorite. Like, look at that. How beautiful is that? If you get nothing else that I mentioned today, please go check this out. It might not be great for all skin colors, but honestly, MAC does have, I want to say about six mineralized skin finish highlighters that range from Warm Rose, which is a very light, sheer kind of white highlight all the way up to 
it's something gold because I know I have like cheeky bronze which is like a reddish bronze bronzy one I have global glow which is gold there's something like a dark dark gold one that is too dark for my complexion but for somebody who is a lot darker it would be fantastic for you so if you don't think this one's your one go check those out because they are all gorgeous and I could rant and rave about every single one of them but like I said I wanted this video to get a little bit shortened um so I will only talk about this one I am kind of thinking of filming like a makeup collection video where I split it into like these are all my highlighters these are all this if that's something you guys are interested in let me know in the comments down below and I will do it I did just recently put up my mac like lipstick swatch video which was outrageously long I will link it up above um but yeah, if you guys like to see more videos like that, let me know. I'm happy to show you guys my collection. It is just an extensive collection, which is why I haven't done it yet. The other highlighter I'm going to talk about, and these, this one has been out before. So the these are the extra dimension highlighters. This is what they all look like. They've all got the MAC like logo etched in them with the lines. This color, though, just came out in their new release, but it is a re-release color. They've had it a couple times before. I just was never able to pick it up until now, and it is in Oh Darling, and it is beautiful. I have a couple of these. I don't think I brought another one up here with me. No, I didn't, but that's okay. But they are gorgeous, stunning. Um, like I said, they did put out, like, look at that. Where's the other one I had? I'll put it right next to this so you can just see the difference, how much that's more of champagne -y. And that is like a gold gold. Absolutely stunning. I think I was wearing this one today. Definitely. This is the one I had on today that I did in my makeup tutorial for this look. It should be up somewhere on my channel by the time this video comes out. If not, wait for it. It's coming. Um, but that is that. These are also absolutely stunning. They haven't been around for quite as long. They don't have quite the cult following that Soft and Gentle has, but they are extremely, extremely pigmented. Um, like I said, they do, they are quite long wearing because I did my makeup. Um, time is it now? It's 11 o'clock at night. I did my makeup probably around noon today so that's 11 hour wear and it is not going anywhere anytime soon unless I wash it off so that just shows you how long that these will wear for they are fantastic there were four colors in the original release that they released when they released the new colors of um, strobe cream and they've recently come out with three more there was this one superb was like a pinky one and then there was another one that was too dark for me but I have about eight of these and I love them all so go check these out they're amazing that is all of the face stuff. Now I'm going to get into eye stuff. So the first thing that I would highly recommend anybody who's getting into MAC eye makeup get are the MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pots. They have so many colors of these, it is ridiculous. But the ones that I would recommend anybody, at least with my skin tone and my complexion to start with, are either in Soft Okra or in Painterly. These are the two that are the most popular there. Um, soft Okra is more of a, I'm just going to show you, those are them there. So Soft Okra, which is on this finger, is more of a yellow undertone, while Painterly is more of that pinky undertone. So really, that's them there. It comes down to sort of what your undertone is. If you are more of a yellow undertone, soft okra is for you. And if you are more of a pinky undertone, go with Painterly. They are fantastic, super creamy. Um, they are great alone or under shadows. If they're under your shadows, they help them stick a lot better. They keep them from creasing. I put Painterly on today before I did my eye makeup and it has not budged one little bit. Um, they are just fantastic. They smooth out any discoloration you might have in your eyes, any veins or anything like that. Like I said, these two are the probably most natural for someone with my complexion to get, but I have them in, you know, different silvers and a pink one. And I think I just got like a bronzy colored one and I've got like an icy gold one. Um, there's so many, so many different things you can do with them. Uh, like I said, you can wear them as standalone products. Sometimes if I'm just doing a really quick makeup look, I will throw on either Painterly or Soft Okra and like hit my eyeliner over it and just stop there. But they are fantastic under shadows as well. Then I get two shadows. MAC has probably one of the biggest selections of eyeshadows, both in color and in, um, 
I guess finish is what I'm looking for. Like they've got their Velux pearls, they've got their shimmers, they've got their extra dimension shadows, matte shadows, velvet shadows, satin shadows, all of that fun stuff. They have a wide, wide variety. So an individual MAC shadow, I believe costs somewhere between 18 and $20. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but somewhere in that range. They have fantastic shades to try out. But I would say that unless you've got a really big eyeshadow collection and you're only looking for one or two colors, the better way to go is to get one of their pre-made palettes. So they have a couple options for this. So there are, first of all, their Times 9 palettes. These are just three of the ones I have. So they recently uh, relaunched a bunch of stuff or did a new launch. So this one is the Tropic Cool Times 9 and it's all these blues and greens. There's also a red Times 9s that's like bright reds and oranges. This one is their Burgundy Times 9. Looks like that. And I believe that these retail for $45. I'm not 100% sure. This one is their Solar Glow Times 9 like that. So basically all these are is they are preconceived palettes that you can pick up there for like I said $45. You get nine different shadows. It gives you, um, I hope you guys could see, it gives you guys a variety of colors that also you know go together. The palettes are pretty co cohesive. You can make a couple of looks with each of these. Um, you can also use the color standalone. They give you a variety of finishes to try out. So I do recommend these, but what I would recommend even more are their 15 palettes. So they've got four, I want to say four, and I have got three of the four. So they have their Mellow Moderns palette, which is the first times 15 I got. So it gives you probably the biggest array of colors. You get a little bit of purples, a gold, some kind of like greeny gray tones. You get the black. Um, you know, a lot of different colors in there. Absolutely stunning. Um, and a lot of these colors you can get in their regular line as well. So if you do go and you see any of these colors that you like that you'd maybe like in an individual pot, like the one, if I was going to say like there's one MAC shadow that almost everybody needs, it would probably be in soft brown, which is this middle color here. It is like the perfect um, soft brown, you know, blending color. It just looks like that. Beautiful crease color. Fantastic. I use it in so many, so many looks. So if I were going to recommend like one color to maybe get, I would definitely go with that one. Um, but yeah, so that's the first option. The second one, this is my warm neutral palette. So this one is your bronzes and your reds and your pinks and like your warm goldeny tones. Looks like that. These colors are beautiful, beautiful. Again, you can do so many looks with one palette. And the last, there's also a cool neutrals, which is like grays and purples. I don't have that one. Um, but if you are brand new to MAC and you are brand new to starting to this line, look no further than the In The Flesh palette. This is their newest 15 release. And it really is like their version of a neutral palette like a like a nude starter kit palette. So this has, you know, all of your light nude colors. It's got your dark smoky colors. And that's my favorite thing about this palette. Is not only does it give you all of these neutral tones, but you also get like all the colors that you would want to make like a really nice smoky eye. You got your carbon, which is like max black color. You can't even see it in the palette from back here. It is black. And then you get those grays, some shimmers, definitely some mattes in there. Again, absolutely stunning. Now, these palettes retail for $85. There is also always the option of kind of building your own Z palette. But I will say that in Canada, the MAC Pro Pan shadows, which are the same size as these ones, retail for $8 each. 8 times 15, I think, is 120 I feel like I did the math for this once before. Let me pull out my giant cell phone here and just double check that I'm doing the math correctly for you guys. All right. Nope. Yeah, $120. So just for the pans alone, you're looking at $120 plus the cost of the Z palette. Um, so ultimately, this is a cheaper way to go and kind of what I would recommend if you're going to start out with their shadows because you can start here and then as you are finding gaps in your collection and maybe you'd like this kind of a color, maybe you'd like a bright blue, a bright purple, something to give you a pop. One thing I will say that I think this palette is missing is like, saved it, nobody panic, is like a dark like chocolatey brown sort of a color. 
Um, you do have these shimmery ones, but like I think a matte dark brown would be really nice. So maybe you pick that up in a pro pan or in one of their regular shadows um, and just fill in the gaps that way. It is a definitely, definitely a much more cost effective way to go and a way to really get your hands on quite a few MAC shadows. So there's those. The last thing I'm going to talk to you guys about are lips. And the first time I did this, I narrowed myself down to nine lipsticks. This time I went much further and I got myself down to four. So I will get to that in a minute. The first thing that I will talk to you guys about is my MAC Prep and Prime lip. This is a clear, it's 100% clear, like a balm kind of a thing. But what this does is not only does it moisturize your lips, it also um, provides your lipsticks and your lip, well, not so much lip liners, but your lipsticks a surface to stick onto if you're not going to use a lip liner underneath them. And it also prevents any uh, lipstick and lip liner from feathering outside of your lip line. It is fantastic, especially if you are like me and you wear lipsticks for a long period of time. Definitely, definitely recommend you get this. I use it with not only MAC lipsticks, but with other lipsticks. I put it on before I do liquid to matte lipsticks just to give my lips a little bit of moisture before all of that dryness comes into it. These are phenomenal. I love them. You can also wear it on its own as a lip balm, but that's kind of your preference if you want to do that. The next thing is the MAC Pro Longwear Lip Pencils. I have a lot of their regular lip pencils also, but I highly, I really, really do prefer these ones. They glide on a lot easier. <clears throat> As the name suggests, they are pro long wear, so they last a lot longer. And the three that I'm going to talk to you guys about are here. So the first one is in Oh Honey, and it is kind of like that perfect, like nude sort of a color. I hope you guys can see that right there. Absolutely stunning. Uh, I do wear this under like Velvet Teddy and uh, the nude that I'm going to show you guys. It's also really pretty under Honey Love. And also these are fantastic on their own. If you're just in a rush and you literally apply it all over your lip, these can be standalone products as well. You don't need to use them as a lip liner. The next one is the first Pro Longwear pencil I ever got and it is in Staunchingly Stylish. So it is another kind of a nude color, but it is darker. It has a little bit more of like a pinkish brownish undertone. It is fantastic under colors like I have on today, which is Brave. I wear it under Twig. I have worn it under Velvet Teddy. It just changes that color up a little bit. Um, another really, really great one to have in your collection. And of course, my favorite, the best red lip liner I have ever tried that I always will come back to trust in red. If I had to recommend a red lip liner to anybody, 100% this would be the one that I would choose. It is that perfect, like, you know, blue toned red. It looks absolutely stunning under so many red lipsticks that I have. Dark ones, light ones, doesn't matter. It adapts to almost any lipstick color that you put over top of it. It could even be a more yellow toned or an orange toned kind of a lipstick and this will still work. It will just change the results a little bit. So these are fantastic. And the last thing I'm going to get into are the four lipsticks that I chose for you guys as starting out with MAC. If you guys want to see a more um, lengthened list of all my lipsticks and see what those all look like, definitely check out my lipstick swatch video. Um, but these are just the four that I picked out that I thought were unique enough and different enough, but still within a certain color range that would speak to the most people. So the first one is the neutral one that I picked, and I chose kind of sexy. Um, where am I going to put this? Go right there. So that is that there. It is like a peachy, burnt kind of peachy, kind of a nude color, absolutely stunning. It is a little bit lighter in color than like Velvet Teddy is, and I didn't talk about Velvet Teddy because everybody talks about it, and I wanted to try and stay away from the mainstream MAC lipsticks that everybody already knows about and go with ones that are a little more underrated but are still absolutely stunning. So this is a matte lipstick, absolutely gorgeous. The next one is... This was my first MAC lipstick, so it holds like a very, very dear place in my heart, and that is Crosswires. It's kind of like a subdued, sort of corally pink color. Looks like that. It is a cream sheen finish. Now, if you don't like this finish of this Crosswires, they have several, several, several that are similar to this uh, that come in almost every kind of finish. There is a frosty one, a matte one, like an amplified one. Absolutely stunning. Again, it was my first lipstick that I ever got from MAC, so it'll always hold a special place in my heart, but I do wear it quite frequently, and I really love that. 
For a pink one, and this is one that a lot of people have actually been recommending lately, although it did slip under the radar for a long time, is A Girl About Town. So it is this like bright pink, but not so bright as to be a hot pink. It kind of has like little bits of purple reflex in it. This is an amplified finish. Again, it is absolutely stunning. I think it would look beautiful on so many different skin tones. You don't need to be blonde with like fair skin to pull this off. It would look beautiful um, if you had like deep dark hair and like an olive undertone. Absolutely stunning. One that I think really could go with almost any skin tone, any hair color, any complexion, any makeup look. And last but not least, I had to mention a red, and you know, normally a lot of people talk about MAC red and about Russian red and Ruby Woo. I wanted to talk about D for Danger. It is my favorite, favorite red. It is a deeper kind of a red. Um, so if that's something that's not you're not into, maybe this isn't for you, but I think it is absolutely stunning. It's another matte finish. Um it is a bit deeper of a red. It is that, that blue tone red. Um, absolutely stunning. I wear this whenever I'm in doubt of a red. I don't reach for those other obvious ones. I always, always, always come back to this because I love the way it looks. So those are the four lipsticks that I would recommend as well as all of the other makeup that I would recommend from MAC. If you guys ever have any questions about MAC makeup, please feel free to ask me. I do know a bit about it because I have a lot of it. Also, like I said, if you guys are interested in seeing any other parts of my collection, please let me know. I'm happy to share with you guys. I hope some of you guys found this video helpful. I will link to all of the products down below in the description bar. And uh, please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.